Let's move on to something new, and I'm going to take a look at tracing. So let's jump back to Visual Studio, and just so it doesn't drive us nuts, we're going to delete out that alert block from earlier on. We don't need that anymore. And then let's jump over to the web.config again. And what I'd like to look at this time is tracing. Now tracing is a very handy feature for spitting out diagnostic information about what's going on inside the web application. Now we can turn tracing on just by jumping down inside system.web, adding a trace element, and turning it on. Let's have a look at what that looks like now. So we'll jump back over to Chrome, and what I'm going to do is just put a forward slash trace.axd. Now this is the handler that's going to load up our trace. So this is what an empty trace log looks like. Not very much to see here. Let's jump back to Visual Studio again. I'm going to jump into our default.aspx page. And what I'm going to do now is just add a couple of traces. So we can say trace.write, my trace message. And then we'll also do a trace.warn, my trace warn. Let's rebuild that. Back over to Chrome. We'll just jump back to the home page now. Now when this loads, that tracing information is going to be added to the trace log. And then we'll jump back over to our trace handler again. We'll click on the top request. Now I'll clear those developer tools, we don't need them in the way. And now we can see that we've got a whole bunch of events. So we're seeing everything from when the pre-init begins all the way through to end render. Now in here is where we set our traces. There's my trace message, and then in red, here's my trace warn. So by turning tracing on, we've been able to spit out this diagnostic information. We also get a heap of data such as control trees, some session state information, and here's that session start key that we set before, the cookies that were passed to the request, there's my session ID, that custom cookie name we set to persist the session, as well as a whole bunch of headers, if there are any forms, if there are any query strings, and a lot of our server variables. Now all of this information is really great for diagnostic information, for troubleshooting. It's also really great for attackers who want to start learning the internal implementation of your application so that they can compromise the system. So we do not want to show this on any form of live website. So let's jump back over to the web.config. And we've got a couple of options here. Now one option is before we go live, making sure that tracing is not enabled. So if we remove the trace node altogether, it will default to being off. Of course, we can just set it to false like this. And either one of those options we can do, say, in a config transform. So actually using perhaps the web.release config transform to either remove that trace node or set the enabled attribute back to false. Or the other thing we can do is we can just simply jump over and say local only, equals true. Now this keeps it available whilst you're running in your development environment on your local machine or if you can actually remote into the server it's running on and open up the website in the browser. But it means that a remote attacker won't be able to get diagnostic information. Now this is very important and it's also worth noting that people do leave this on in production. And certainly I've seen many cases where there are trace logs publicly accessible. Be conscious that things like Google will go through and index those trace logs as well. So please, please do ensure that your trace log is configured correctly.